Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to read a scripture from Isaiah chapter 58, 57, verse 15. For thus saith the high lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high holy place with him. Also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Amen. 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 Who has a, anybody have a song request? Uh, no. Can we sing in the red book, uh, when they ring the, the golden bells, 224?
Anybody have a testimony? I understand that. Amen. Bless you, Father.
Lord, we thank you for that tonight. We praise you, Father, for the blood of Christ here, Lord God, that takes all of our sin away, Father. And Lord God, that you don't just do it in part, that you don't just save in part, but Father, that you give us the full assurance of salvation, Father. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the finished works of the cross, Father. And Lord, we thank you for the blood, dear Lord. Father God, Lord, that just a cleanses us and purifies us, dear Lord God, and Lord, even purges our conscience and our mind, dear Lord God, to help us, dear Lord God, to be delivered from dead works, to serve you, Father, and Lord, we thank you tonight, my Savior, God, Lord, we thank you for the testimonies, dear Lord, that you give us, Father, Lord, we thank you for the Spirit working in our brothers and sisters, Father God, and Lord, we're just so thankful, Father God, Lord, for each and every soul that you let us uh, gather together and worship with tonight, Father God, and Lord, we just praise you tonight, dear Lord God, for Brother Jim. We thank you for the wonderful testimony in his life, Father God. Lord, that he's not ashamed of you, Father God. Lord, and how he loves you, Father God. And, and Lord, how he desires to walk in the fullness of your spirit and in the, and your complete will, Father. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord God, for using him even when he's weak and even when he's tired and even when he's sick, dear Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for using him, Father God, for we know that your strength is made perfect in our weakness, Father. Lord, we thank you tonight for that, my Father. Lord, what a privilege it is that we can come to you and cast all of our care upon the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. Lord, we thank you that tonight, dear Lord God, that you hear our prayer. And Father, we lift up Sister Irene to you, dear Lord God. Lord, we lift her up and, and we pray, Father God, Lord, that you would just help her, dear Lord. Help her soul and help her heart and help her mind, Father God. And Lord God, that you would just strengthen her, dear Lord God, and help her to overcome, uh, dear Lord God, her infirmities, Father God. Lord, that, that, that folks may see your power and your glory, Father God, Lord, manifest in her. And Father God, Lord, that you would quicken Brother Jim through her, Father. Lord, I just thank you tonight, Father God. Lord, for keeping them, dear Lord God, from the evil. I'm not praying tonight, Father, that you would take them out of the world, but, Father, that you would keep them from evil, Father. Lord, that you'd surround them about with the songs of deliverance, I pray, my Father. Lord, I just thank you, dear Lord God, for my brothers and sisters, dear Lord God. I just pray, God, dear Lord God, for those that I come in contact with, Father. Lord, that I might be a blessing, dear Lord God, and give honor and glory unto your name, Father. Lord, what a privilege and praise tonight, Father God, Lord, again, uh, that you let us give the Lord gather. Lord God, I thank you for the children, dear Lord God, and for the testimony in their hearts and in their minds and in their souls that's for you, Father. Lord, I pray tonight, Father, Lord, lead us and guide us to each and for everything that's said and done, Father. Lord God, that your name would be exalted, that your church, dear Lord God, would be encouraged. And Father, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory, Father. And Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this little church. Thank you for my Christian brothers and sisters. Thank you, dear God, for being my Father. Thank you for being the great dove for the you are. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your love. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Just thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, 33 in the red book, Rusty. you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? 
are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Then we can have Ray Ray come up and take up the offering for us. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, Till ten. 
Heavenly Father. And so we look at Psalm 34, and the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto Him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles and the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them all oh, taste and see that the Lord is good blessed is the man that trusteth in him oh fear the Lord ye his saints for there is no want to them that fear him the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but they that see the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye children, hearken unto me and I will teach ye, teach you the fear of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you on high. We magnify you, almighty Father, Lord God, for thou art worthy and thou alone, Father God. Lord, we praise you for the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. Father God, whose blood, Father, was purposed to take away our sin uh, even in the garden of Eden when you took the animal skins uh, and you covered uh, Adam and Eve uh, and Father I praise you this morning tonight dear Lord God uh, for taking away my sin uh, and Father God Lord I desire uh, to be a blessing unto you Father uh, Lord uh, for I know that that's what we were created for uh, was to bless uh, and to glorify and to worship you Father Lord we thank you tonight for that and we pray Father God God, uh, uh, Lord God, that you would quicken us uh, by your spirit, Father. Lord, we pray that you would give us uh, the utterance, Father God, uh, uh, for Lord, the flesh, uh, uh, dear Lord God, cannot do glory in the Lord, uh, Father God, but it's only your spirit. Uh, and Father, I give you all the praise and I give you all the glory forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, my Lord uh, and my Savior. Uh, oh, Paul, uh, how he said, uh, uh, God forbid, uh, that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom I am crucified under the world, and the world under me. I'm so glad, hallelujah, that the flesh cannot glory in the presence of God. Amen. I'm so glad that God is the Spirit, and He seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I tell you, brother, that mankind looks to praise mankind, but God's Spirit, uh, hallelujah, seeks uh, to worship and glorify God uh, Almighty. Uh, the Bible said that Jesus uh, spoke of the Holy Ghost, uh, and that when the Holy Ghost came, uh, He would not speak of Himself, uh, uh, but He would testify uh, of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and He would reprove the world of sin and of righteousness uh, and of judgment. Uh, and I'm so glad, hallelujah, uh, for the blessings of the Lord that He pours upon His children. Uh, hallelujah. Psalm 103 uh, uh, said bless the Lord uh, oh my soul uh, and all that is within me bless his uh, holy name uh, bless the Lord uh, oh my soul uh, and forget not all his benefits uh, who healeth all thy diseases uh, who forgiveth all thine iniquities uh, who hallelujah with that crowneth thee with loving kindness uh, and tender mercies uh, who redeemeth thee from destruction uh, who satisfies uh, thy mouth with good things uh, so that thy youth uh, is renewed uh, like the eagle. Glory be to God. Uh, the Bible said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me uh, and let us exalt his name together. Uh, he said that this poor man cried uh, and the Lord heard him uh, and delivered him uh, from all uh, his troubles. I'm glad uh, that God didn't just save me from some of my troubles, uh, but hallelujah, uh, he took all of my troubles uh, upon him. Uh, and glory be to God, he is cast him uh, behind his back. Uh, he is so far, uh, the Bible says, uh, and as far as the east is uh, from the west, so far uh, has he removed uh, our transgressions from us. Uh, I'm so glad, hallelujah, uh, that God took all of those troubles. Uh, he didn't just take some. Uh, he didn't just take one or two. Uh, but hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. This poor man cried and God heard him. The psalmist said in Psalm 40 that I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and oh he heard my cry and he brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay and he set my foot upon a rock and he has established my goings and he's put a new song in my mouth. Hallelujah. He said that many shall hear it and fear and come to the salvation of the Lord. I tell you that God gives us new things in his salvation. Amen. It's a blessing, hallelujah, to be saved. It's a blessing, amen, to worship and to praise God Almighty. Hallelujah. The Bible says that I sought the Lord and He heard me and He delivered me from all. All. Hallelujah. Everybody say all. All. Glory. Hallelujah. All my fears. They looked unto Him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. Brother, that's what I want to speak on tonight is that they they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. I'm telling you tonight, amen. The glory be to God. The devil likes to use shame. He'll like to shame you and bring you down to his level. He is jealous of you. He is envious of you. Brother, but I tell you that my God loves me. Hallelujah. He loves me enough to protect me from evil. Hallelujah. I'm glad that he didn't just take me out of here when he saved me, but he left me here to fill me with the Holy Ghost. Glory, hallelujah, that in the midst of his enemies, hallelujah, that we can glorify God and give him praise in a dark and sinful world. Hallelujah, Psalm 23 said that thou preparest a table before me in the presence of of mine enemies. I'm so glad, hallelujah, that God gives us the strength, amen, to glorify and to praise and to worship His holy name. Brother, that word is shame. It means to feel shame. It means to have guilt. It means to be disgraced or embarrassed. I don't know about you, but glory be to God, I'm not disgraced. I'm full of grace. Amen. I don't have grace taken from me, but I'm full of the grace of God. It's by the four by, where by the, the Bible said in Ephesians 2 and 28, for by grace are ye saved and not by works lest any man should boast hallelujah by grace through faith amen and God has shed abundantly shed his grace upon us and filled us with the grace of God and the word of shame means to feel regretful and inferior or unworthy that's exactly what the devil wants for Christians to feel like that one's inferior one to another that one might be higher or closer to God than another. But I tell you that Jesus, hallelujah, the Bible said that he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God, hallelujah, that we might have the righteousness of God. It's a blessing, amen, that brother, if you have the righteousness of God, it doesn't get any better than that. Hallelujah, that settles it plain and simple and puts us all. Either you're saved or you're not saved. Hallelujah, Jesus said that he that is with me, that he that is with me is not against me, and he that gathereth not scattereth abroad. Brother, it's a blessing, amen. To hallelujah be saved. I'm glad that there's not no middle ground with Jesus. Either you're in the boat or brother you're out of the boat. Amen. Either you're in the ark of safety or you're out of the ark of safety. And the condemnation of God Almighty is coming upon you. But I tell you that the Bible said it told me that there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. The devil wants you to feel shame. He wants you to feel guilt. Yeah. He wants you to feel disgraced and to be embarrassed. Hey, brother, he wants to bring you down to his level because I tell you what, he was embarrassed. He was shamed. He was disgraced when he tried to rise up above God in heaven. And the Bible said that Jesus told the disciples, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Amen. They said, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And glory be to God. Jesus said, I saw him fall from heaven. Revelation 12 said that there was a great war in heaven and Michael fought 
that old dragon, that serpent, which is the devil, and he prevailed. Woo! I'm so glad that, hallelujah, that my God prevailed. My God cast him out as lightning from heaven. Hallelujah to this earth. And glory be to God. He's been cursed to crawl on his belly ever since. Glory, hallelujah. I tell you that, hallelujah, brother, he wants to bring you down to his level. But I tell you, devil, you don't have no power over me. Because in that same chapter in Luke chapter 10, and beginning at verse 18, the Bible said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. But in this, he said, Rejoice not. He said, But rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Glory be to God. Rejoice, hallelujah, that God has saved you. Hallelujah, the devil would like for you to be ashamed. He would like for you to be disgraced. He would like for you to, uh, brother, for you to lose every bit of hope. And you know what, brother, when you get your mind made up, that you're going to follow God with all your heart. I want you to know that you are the enemy of Satan. And brother, he hates you with a passion. And he wants to bring you down to the lake of fire with him. But glory be to God, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And glory be to God. I'm thankful, amen, to know that God will prosper even in the presence of his enemies, amen. The Bible said in Acts chapter 6 that brother, there was the Bible going on. Amen. People's hearts were being stirred. There were people full of the Holy Ghost in the new church. Amen. And God, a brother, was getting ready to grow his church, not by addition, but by multiplication. God was getting ready to multiply his people. And I'm so glad, hallelujah, for the power of my God and of my Savior. When the Bible says, in Acts chapter 6, hallelujah, there's the word. I didn't even know it was there. Bless Jesus. He said in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied. Yeah. yeah. Amen. There arose a murmuring. <laughs> hallelujah. You know what, brother? You get on fire for God and you decide, amen, that I'm going to follow you. I've decided to follow Jesus. But not go with me. Still, I will follow. Amen. The cross before me. The world behind me. Hallelujah. I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. Brother, I want you to know that the enemy will try to throw a wrench in the works. Oh, but glory be to God. I'm glad that he don't have no power. I'm glad, amen. Amen. that he gave the keys to Jesus when Jesus, hallelujah, okay, descended into the lower parts of the earth, amen, and bought us with his blood, hallelujah, and glory be to God, redeemed us from the power of death and of sin. The Bible says that in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring, murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. He said, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the Word of God yeah. and serve tables. He said, Glory be to God, I tell you, ooh, there is no greater calling. There is no greater calling upon us than what God has called us to do. We have the ministry of reconciliation to God. Amen. It has been committed unto us. Amen. To tell the world that Jesus lives and that they can be reconciled unto God. Hallelujah. That means that all debts can be paid for. All debts for all sin can be paid for and everything can be taken care of. Hallelujah. That ministry of reconciliation. The Bible said that the twelve said it is not reason that we should leave the Word of God and serve tables. Everything else, everything else is secondary to what God has called us to do. Amen. Everything else is secondary. Glory be to God. Wherefore, brethren, he said, look you out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> of wisdom, that we may appoint over this business. But we, 
will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. They said we're going to pray night and day. We're going to study the Word of God night and day. Hallelujah. We're going to be ministers. I tell you that Jesus Himself did not come to be served. He came not a brother to be served, but He came to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. Even Jesus the Lord, He came to minister, hallelujah, to the world, that the world might be saved. And the Bible said in the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased in the number of the disciples. There's that word again, multiplied. How many, how many of you would rather have multiplication or addition? I'd rather have multiplication, Brother Jim. Hallelujah. The Bible said there that the, the, the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen full of faith and power, yeah. did great wonders and miracles among the people. You know who Stephen was? He was a deacon. Yeah. Yes, sir. He was a man full of the Holy Ghost. You know, that's what we need today. This man full of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Amen. And the Bible says that he was full of faith and power and did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then arose the certain of the synagogue, yeah. which called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians and of them of Sicilia and Asia disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. In other words, they would try to confound him. They would try to bring him down. They would try to disgrace him. They would try to shame him. And you know what? Stephen would still walk with his head held high. He would say, my salvation, it's not in me. You can do whatever you want to me. My salvation's not in me. Hallelujah, my salvation's above. My salvation is the Lord Jesus Christ. He keeps me upright. Amen. He keeps me, glory be to God, walking, hallelujah, in his grace and his glory the Bible says that they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake and the Bible said that they suborned men which said we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God in other words they had to lie yeah. to try. They had to lie. You know the devil's a liar and the father of it. Amen. Yeah they had to begin lying to try to get it. So they couldn't find nothing honestly wrong with him. Hallelujah. So they had to lie. Amen. I tell you, that's what a cheat will do. Amen. A cheat will begin making up lies about the people of God. Amen. Because he can't, he knows that he can't do it righteously. Yeah. Amen. Glory be to God. The Bible said right here that they stirred up the people yeah. and the elders and the scribes and they came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and they set up false witnesses which said, This man seeth us not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on him and saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. You know the Bible said right there in Psalm 34 that they looked upon him and their faces, they were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. I tell you that they had taken Stephen and they had put him up, a brother on trial, in front of all of the council, in front of all of these people. And brother, they tried to shame Stephen. They wanted to bring Stephen down. Brother, they wanted to, and they looked steadfastly on him with intent, brother, to try to bring him down and to try to break him. But I tell you that the Bible said they looked on him and his face Hallelujah. It's shined with the glory and the countenance of an angel. Hey, Amen. I tell you that when you look to Jesus, hallelujah, when you're looking at the Son of God, when you're looking at Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus is the light of this 
this world. I tell you, when Jesus returns, hallelujah, the sun will blush at the glory of Jesus. When Jesus returns, brother, it will be so bright that everything else in the universe will be dim. And when sun, when Stephen looked to Jesus and saw Jesus, hallelujah, the reflection of the sun of God shined upon his face. I tell you that you get in the presence of God and glory be to God. He'll lighten your countenance. Amen. Hallelujah. Your face will not be ashamed. It will not be a face of disgrace. It will not be a face of uh, uh, glory be to God of regret or inferiority uh, or unworthiness. Uh, but it will be filled with the glory of God. Uh, the Bible said that Moses, uh, a brother, went uh, to Mount Sinai uh, and took uh, down the commandments uh, in the presence of God Almighty for 40 days. Moses uh, was on top of that mountain. Uh, and brother, he never drank water uh, or ate bread. Uh, as God took his finger uh, and wrote on the tablets of stone and when Moses came down from the mountaintop the Bible said that he had to wrap a towel around his head and around his face because he had been in the presence of God Almighty and amen the Bible says that if the ministration of condemnation be glory much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory I tell you it's greater hallelujah than the law of God because Jesus is the fulfilled word and law of God. What a blessing. Amen. The Bible said, the high priest said to Stephen, are these things so? And you know what Stephen did? Stephen didn't say, oh, I'm ashamed. Oh, I tell you, I'm unworthy. I'm disgraced that you all put me on trial. That isn't what Stephen did. You know what Stephen did? He began preaching. Amen. Amen right there in court. Amen. Right there on trial. He began preaching. All the way. A brother from Abraham. He started back in the book of Genesis. And brother, he began going through step by step. Hallelujah what God had done for him. Amen. You know what the Bible says? That he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness within himself. The Bible told Jesus prophesied of this, brother. Jesus said, you're going to be put up before the councils. He says that they're going to put you on trial. And he says that, brother, they're going to do it for my name's sake. Yeah. Jesus said that they're going to put you, he said, but don't settle it in your hearts what you're going to say beforehand. Right. He says, because the Spirit of your Heavenly Father yeah. will speak in you that very hour. <laughs> Woo! I'm so glad. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. My Father's got tomorrow in His hands and He'll speak for me when the time Tell you, he testified for Jesus. Yeah. He said, This is my beloved son, and whom I am well pleased. Hear me oh, him. Yeah. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. He thundered from heaven, yeah. and he said, This is my beloved son. Oh, I'm so glad, hallelujah, that God testified three times yeah. when Christ walked this earth that Jesus was the Son of God. You know what the Bible says in the law? Then in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I tell you that God established who Jesus was. He didn't need another man to say who he was. He, hallelujah, had the witness of his Father. The Word and the Father and the Spirit bared record in heaven. Hallelujah is the way John put it. Amen. I'm so glad. Amen. That Stephen began to preach the gospel in his trial. The Bible says... That he went all the way through Joseph. He went all the way through Moses. How that Moses, my brother, was was not willing to be called the son of Pharaoh. But brother, he chose to endure the afflictions of God's people rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That Moses chose to follow God Almighty. And the Bible said, and it went on and Stephen said that he began talking about how that they had crucified of the Messiah that had been prophesied all the way back in Genesis chapter 12 when God called Abraham and he said get thee out of thy father's house and out of thy father's country unto a land that I'll show you and I'll make you a blessing amen and in thee shall all nations of the earth be blessed I tell you God prophesied it when it was written 4000 BC amen that glory be to God that God almighty Amen. Gave a promise, gave a covenant. And today, all the nations of the earth are blessed through the seed of Abraham. And Paul said in Galatians chapter 3 that that seed is not to many, but that seed.
seed is the one, which is Jesus Christ. He is the seed of Abraham. And I'm so glad, hallelujah, that God brought forth his son, born of a virgin, and that they that are faith are the children of faithful Abraham. Glory be to God, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. Amen. Hallelujah. Stephen was excited. Brother, he was going to preach the word whether they had him on trial or not. He went all the way through David and all the way through Solomon. And the Bible said that David wanted to build him. David wanted to build him a sanctuary. But the Bible said, How be it the Most High, he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. You know what the Bible says he dwells in? He says, he says Know ye not that ye, ye, that means us, are the temple of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> This body wasn't made with hands. Amen. I was fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. The Bible said right here, He says that heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, saith the Lord? For what is my place of rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Stephen looked to the council and he said, He's stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted and have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one of whom ye have now been the betrayers and murderers? He said, you murdered your Messiah. Mm -hmm. He said, you murdered your Messiah of whom ye have received the law by the disposition, disposition of angels mm -hmm. and have not kept. He said, angels brought this message to you. Angels from God on high yeah. brought and testified mm -hmm. who he was. And you murdered him. Woo. You know what the Bible says? When they heard these things, yeah. they were cut to the heart. Yes, sir. It cut him to the quick, brother. And the Bible says that they gnashed on him with their teeth. They began to say, you dirty, rotten, low down, so and so. I can't believe that you would say this about us. And brother, it cut their pride down to where it needed to be. That's right. Yes, in Jesus Christ, when we have the hope of the gospel of God Almighty, we'll not be ashamed. The Bible said that if we have hope in this life only in Christ Jesus, we are of all men most miserable. But I tell you, brother, that God has prepared us a place and we need not fear what can happen in this world. But glory be to God, Paul said, I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die it's gain. But Stephen was full of this hope. He said, hallelujah, I know that if I die for my Savior's name, hallelujah, I'll meet him in glory. Hallelujah. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Brother, we have a hope that's wonderful. It's great. It's all powerful. Brother, in the face of hope, it'll crush shame. If we have a hope of Jesus Christ, then when the enemy comes and he tries to tear us down, and He tries to take our hope. And He tries to take the sanctity that God has given us. Tries to take the holiness that God has blessed us with. Brother, we can look to Jesus and have that hope, that blessed assurance, knowing, amen, that heaven is our home. Amen. Knowing that glory be to God. We've been justified. We've been reconciled unto God Almighty. The Bible says in Romans 5, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God Amen. through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory and tribulations also. <laughs> hallelujah. Not just when things are good. <laughs> Not just when we're up on the mountain. <laughs> but hallelujah, when we're in the valleys. <laughs> the Bible said <laughs> in the Song of Solomon to Jesus, He is the lily of <laughs> my beloved. <laughs> he is the lily <laughs> of the valleys. Amen. <laughs> the glory be to God. <laughs> that we glory and we rejoice. Hallelujah. Even in tribulations. 
It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. And you know what hope does? And hope maketh not ashamed. Hallelujah, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Hallelujah, the love of God, it's full in our hearts. And I have nothing, brother, to be disgraced over. I have nothing, amen, to feel unworthy or inferior over. I tell you that God loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son. And brother, for me to say that I'm inferior in the grace of God, that's to say Jesus is inferior. For me to say that I'm unworthy is to say that Jesus was unworthy. Because brother, if you're covered in the blood and God gave His Son, He loved you enough to send His Son to die on Calvary. Brother, God I thought that you were worthy enough for His Son to come that God might be glorified in His name. Might be exalted through your salvation. Amen. Brother, hope will crush shame. Yeah. It'll crush shame, brother. When we look to the Bible says, looking hallelujah for the glorious looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ hallelujah looking for that blessed hope if we have that blessed hope in our heart we won't be ashamed the enemy won't have a chance he won't have a chance to make you feel ashamed he like to that's, his, that's, what he, that's what he tries to do he comes to steal he comes to to kill, and He comes to destroy. Brother, He'd like to bring you right down to His level. I tell you, brother, the concept of being unashamed, the concept of being bold in God's hope, is not difficult. It's not complicated at all. The thing that we must only do, the only thing that we must do is simply tell the truth. Amen. That's all we got to do. That's all we have to do is tell the truth. It's not a complicated thing. You know, many folks today say, well, I can't follow God. I can't do the things of the church. It's too complicated. I can't understand. I tell you, brother, that the ways of a transgressor is hard. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, I am meek and lowly in heart. He said, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Uh, brother, I tell you, we must only, uh, all that we need to do is tell the truth. You say, well, what is truth, brother? Jesus said in John chapter 17, as He prayed earnestly in the garden, uh, He said, Father, Thy Word uh, is truth. Uh, that God's Word will stand. Uh, the Bible said that all flesh is grass and the glory of man is as the flower of grass. Yeah. He said that the grass withereth and the flower thereof fadeth away. He says, but the word of the Lord shall endure forever. Amen. He says that we need to be born again. Amen. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God that lives and abides forever. Amen. That glory be to God. We need only tell the truth. Amen. John chapter 9, the Bible said that there was a man who was blind. There was a man who was blind. And as Jesus and the disciples walked by, the disciples asked Jesus, they said, Lord, who sinned? This man or his parents? And Jesus said, neither has sinned. He said that this man is like this. That the glory of God would be manifest in him. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. He said, glory be to God while it is day. He said, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am the world, in the world, I am the light of the world. The Bible said when he had thus spoken, the Bible said that he took the clay of the ground and spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man. And the Bible said that he told him to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sin. And he went his way therefore and washed. And when he came back, he could see. He could see. He was born blind. Yeah. He was born blind. He did nothing happen and made him blind. He was born that way. He had never seen the light of day. Never. That was the purpose. Amen. Is that God would be glorified. 
The Bible said that the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that was blind said, Is not this he that sat in bed? Mm -hmm. Isn't that man down there at the church, that man that used to be a drunkard? Isn't that man, isn't that woman the one that used to be out there carousing around? Aren't they the ones that used to be out here a cursing and a swearing and doing all kinds of wicked things uh, and brothers uh, uh, blaspheming and, uh, and doing this and uh, doing that? Uh, the neighbor said, uh, Brother, uh, I think that was them. Yes. What are they doing down there? Right. Something happened. Right. Hallelujah, I once was blind, but now I see. Yes. Glory be to God. And the Bible said uh, that some said, This is he. But others said, Oh, he's like him. But you know what he said? I'm he. That's me. I am the one. I'm the one that was blind. Amen. The Bible says, Therefore they said unto him, How were thine eyes open? And he answered me, he said, A man that is called Jesus. <laughs> Ooh, aren't you glad for a man called Jesus? <laughs> Amen. He said, And a man called Jesus, he made clay and anointed mine eyes. And he said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And he went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He says, I know not. And they brought him to the Pharisees that was four time was blind. And on the Sabbath day, it was on the Sabbath day that Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, He put clay on my eyes. I washed and I see. It was that simple. It wasn't some complicated thing. He didn't have to go through all kinds of different scriptures. He didn't have to go through all these things that he had learned and all these things that he had studied year after year. He said, brother, a man named Jesus came and he took clay and spittle and he anointed my eyes and I obeyed him and I went and washed and now I see. Only thing I know to tell you is the truth. That's the only thing that I can testify of is the truth of what God did in me. Hallelujah. That's the only thing that I know is that God is real and what God has done. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He made it pretty pretty simple. He wasn't ashamed to tell the truth. You get you start telling lies, brother, you better be ashamed. Amen. You start making things up, you better be ashamed of it. But glory be to God, if you just simply tell the truth, what happened? Hey, Amen. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Hallelujah, because He has put that hope inside of us. Amen. It doesn't matter who I'm standing before. It doesn't matter whether it's the council. It doesn't matter whether it's kings. It doesn't matter whether it's presidents. It doesn't matter whether it's my heathen neighbor that hates my guts. Amen. It doesn't matter whether it's the man down the road that can't stand me. It doesn't matter whether it's somebody that, brother, I just can't stand the name of Jesus. If God quickens you to speak His Word and to speak in His Spirit, you need not fear. You need not be ashamed. Hallelujah. You look to Jesus and your face will be lit up. And glory, hallelujah, the glory of God will be manifested. You. Yes, sir. The Bible said the Jews didn't believe him. They couldn't believe him. Their hearts were hard. They didn't believe his testimony of this guy. Go get his parents. We'll prove this liar. We'll see what this liar has to say then. We'll ask his parents. They'll tell us that somebody, somebody else, somebody, some doctor or something. This man was never really blind anyway. Let's see what his parents had to say. That's what they were thinking. The Bible says that the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son? Who, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? You say he was born blind. You tell us how he sees. His parents answered and said, we know that this is our son. Amen. And I know when he was a baby. Amen. I know when he was a baby that he couldn't see. I know he was born blind. Amen. It broke my heart. I can just picture what his mother said. It broke my heart that my baby was blind. And you know she's thinking that in her heart. And she's looking back to the day that the baby was born. And she realized that he wasn't able to see anything. And no doubt it broke her heart. The Bible says here, she said, we know this is our son. 
and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He'll speak for himself. These words spake his parents. Why? Because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if any man did confess that Jesus was the Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. Brother, there's no greater witness coming from your own mouth. Amen. No greater witness. Then again, they called the man that was blind, and they said, give God the praise. Give God the praise. Now, okay, we know you were blind. We know that you were born blind. Your parents said so, so we, we believe you. Now, you need to give God the praise because we know this man Jesus is a sinner. Nobody does things on the Sabbath day and heals people on the Sabbath day and is accepted of God. And he says, buddy, let me tell you something. Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. I don't know none of that. But I can tell you one thing. That I was blind and now I see. <laughs> I don't know anything. Else. I, don't, I don't know a whole lot of this stuff you're asking me about. But I know that I was a blind man. And I know that I spent years and years upon this earth blind. That I was blinded from the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. But one day, He came and found me. And He said, Glory, hallelujah, I came that God might be manifest in you. That God, the glory of God might be manifest in you. The Bible said, They reviled him. He says, I've answered you already, and you believe me not. He says, You won't hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Do you want to be his disciples? And they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple. We are Moses' disciple. They just condemned themselves. They just condemned themselves. For verily the law came by Moses. The grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. So it says in John chapter 1. They just condemn themselves. By thy mouth thou shalt be justified, and by thy mouth thou shalt be condemned. He said, We are Moses' disciple. You're his disciple. Wouldn't it be good somebody to co confess for you that you're Jesus' disciple? <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. The Bible says, We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if a man be a worshiper of God, and doeth his will him, he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he couldn't do anything. Yeah. He says, nobody else. Nobody, you tell me of one other that's been able to do what Jesus did. You tell me of one other that millions upon millions around the world testify Amen. of what Jesus did. Amen. You tell me about, you tell me of any other millions upon millions throughout history, throughout thousands of years, who can say, look, I was a sinner. And one day Jesus came and found me. And He had mercy and compassion upon me. And the God of this world had blinded my eyes from the light of the glorious gospel. But one day Jesus opened my eyes. And now I can see Jesus for who He really is. And now I can see that Jesus is real. I can see that Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Hallelujah. That I'm going to go and be with Him in glory. This world is not my home. i got a blessed hope. I'm not ashamed. Hallelujah. To tell the world who Jesus is. The Bible said, and they answered Him and they said, You were all together born in sins. And thus thou teach us cast Him out of the sin. You know what? All of his hope of gain, prosperity, possessions, 
from the synagogue were gone. This man didn't have nothing. He had nothing to begin with. He was a he was a blind he was a blind man, a beggar. He didn't have anything. You know what? When you don't have nothing, you don't have nothing to lose. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm glad that what I have, my Father gave me. Alex. Yes, sir. My Father gave it to me. I don't own anything. Amen. I don't even own this body. The Bible says, know you not that you were redeemed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you are not your own. I'm glad that I don't own myself because I'd make a wreck of myself. God owns me. God owns me. The Bible said that Jesus heard that they cast him out. You know what, brother? You get you get cast out for the Son of Man's sake, name. You get persecuted for His name. Don't you think for one minute that Jesus is going to forget about you? Don't you think for one minute that He's going to abandon you? He said, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus said, be content with what such things as you have. For He has said, I'll never leave thee, nor forsake thee. The Bible said that Jesus heard that he had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? And he said, Who is he, Lord? And I might believe on him. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. Amen. And he said, Lord, I believe. Yeah. And he worshipped him. Amen. You know what? That's what Jesus is looking for. He's looking for people who believe. Amen. That's what he's looking for. He said, Well, Brother Troy, I believe if Jesus did some miracles, brother, the greatest miracle you'll ever see. Jesus said, greater works than I do shall you do because I go unto my Father. The greatest miracle you'll ever see. It's not the blinded eyes. That's a great miracle. It's not the raising of the dead. That's a, that's a brother, that is a wonderful miracle. Even the Greeks came to hear about this man that had raised Lazarus from the dead. Man, oh brother, they were they wanted to find out how did he do it? The greatest miracle you'll behold is the new birth. Hallelujah! That is the greatest Amen. miracle. Yes, for sure. That is the greatest miracle to be born from above. Praise God. The spirit of Almighty God. Praise God, thank you. Brother who is almighty, all present, Amen. and all knowing yes, comes and lives and takes up a bone inside of your body, Amen. inside of your heart and inside of your soul and changes you Amen. from a sinner to a saint. Yes, changes you from a brother from a, from a condemned slave to a washed, upright yes, king Amen. to a priest. Hallelujah. You said, what are you talking about? The Bible said in Revelation chapter 1 that he has washed us in his own blood and made us kings and priests, hallelujah. In Jesus Christ, we are made kings and priests. The Bible says in John chapter 12 that, brother, they were, there were many, even though Jesus had done many miracles among them, even though Jesus had done great things among them, they wouldn't believe. There were people that Jesus preached to. There were people when Jesus would raise the dead, when He would make the lame to walk. You remember, the Bible said that He entered again into Capernaum, and after many days there was noise abroad that He was in the house. And brother, then he, there came one that was born of four, and brother, when they could not come nigh to Him, they went on top of the house, and they uncovered the roof where He was. Uh, and brother, when Jesus saw their faith, uh, He said unto Him, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Uh, and there were certain that reasoned in themselves, saying, The light of this man thus speak blasphemies. Uh, who can forgive sins uh, but God only? Uh, and when Jesus perceived their thoughts, uh, He said, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Uh, whether it is easier to say, uh, Thy sins be forgiven thee, uh, or to, 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 to rise uh, and take up thy bed and walk, uh, is so that you may know that the Son of Man uh, has power on earth to forgive sins. Uh, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Arise, uh, take up thy bed, uh, and go thy way uh, into thy house. Uh, and brother, uh, he, brother, the Bible said that immediately uh, he received strength uh, and went forth before them all in so much that they were amazed uh, and glorified God. Uh, they said, We've never saw it before uh, on this fashion. Uh, and glory be to God, but brother, they still wouldn't believe. 
Even though Jesus had done many miracles, even though He had fed the 5,000, they wouldn't believe. The Bible said in John 12 and 37, but though He had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on Him. There are millions today that will testify who Jesus is. There are millions today that will testify and say, He's the Son of God. Brother, there are sinners that know who He is. Amen. Yeah, the devils know who Jesus is too. Amen. Yes, sir. The Bible said when He came to the land of the Gadarenes that a man that was possessed with 2,000 demons came. And He said, I know who you are. Yes, You're Jesus. You're the Son of the Most High God. Amen. Yes, Have you come to torment us before our time? Yes, that demon fell down and worshipped Him. Yes, Hallelujah. Jesus is all powerful, brother. Yeah. I'm so glad. The Bible said, though he had done many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, that he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. And they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw the glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees they would not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. They would have rather received praise from the Pharisees than the praise of God. It's a sad condition. It's a very sad condition. Look, brother, you don't need to be ashamed of Jesus. You don't need to be ashamed of Him. You don't need to be ashamed of what Christ has done. Hallelujah. I'm so glad, amen, that the Lord has given us something worth testifying about. I'm so glad that the Lord has empowered us to walk in this world as conquerors. More than conquerors. You know there's not even angels. There's no devils. There's, brother, there's no man in this world that can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. There's nothing that can force us to be separated from the love of God. Nothing. Brother, if I die, I'm going to His presence. Praise God. Amen. The Bible says that God's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He said, Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. He said, Nor of me His prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. He says, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. He said, For I know in whom I have believed. Amen. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard in me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest that all they that were to in Asia be turned away from me. He said, The Lord give mercy unto the house of Uncyphorus for he oft refreshed me he wasn't ashamed of my chain. There was a man that was in prison. He was in prison. 
And so this man would come. I believe he refreshed him by fellowship with him and the power of God. You know it's refreshing to be around other Christians. Amen. It's refreshing. That's why God desires for us to come, to worship. It doesn't say you come to church. Brother, if you can come to a church that preaches the Word, the blood, and the born-again Spirit of God and not get saved, there is something truly wrong. There is something truly wrong. And brother, I believe that if you're around it enough, you will believe. If people are around it enough, they will eventually believe. Amen. And they will, glory be to God, they will give their heart eventually over to Jesus Christ. Yes, if they hear the word enough, they will come to the knowledge of the salvation Amen. of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible said in Romans chapter 10 that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Bible says, And how shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Amen. As it is written, how glorious, hallelujah, how beautiful are the feet Amen. of him that preach the yes, gospel, Lord. the glad tidings of good things, and preach the gospel of peace. You have the ministry of reconciliation. You have the power of God inside of you now to take the gospel to whosoever will. To whosoever will. Paul said in Romans 1 and 15, so much as in me is. He didn't say so much as, as is in me. He said it's not changed. It's not changed. God loves the Word and He gave His own God Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you tonight, my Savior God, for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Father God, Lord, we're not ashamed of his testimony. Dear Lord God, will not, dear Lord God, be disgraced, will not be embarrassed, Father God. Lord, by the enemy any longer. Lord God, will not think, dear Lord God, that, uh, uh, that we're worthless or, uh, dear Lord God, that we uh, are, are castaways or uh, uh, misfits, dear Lord God. But we are Your precious children. We are the sheep of Your pastor. And Lord God, our the Good Shepherd gave His life for us, Lord God. Oh, we praise You tonight. Father, for saving us, for loving us, showing us Your compassion. Lord God, that we're redeeming us. Lord God, that we might go free, dear Lord God. That we would have a blessed hope, uh, dear Lord God. Father God, Lord, that that hope would make us not ashamed. That it would not make us feel disgraced and embarrassed. But that, Lord God, that we would uh, be conquerors. That we would always triumph in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank You tonight for that. We praise You tonight, Father God. Lord, for we could never accomplish these things on our own. Lord, we could never attain to Your holiness, to Your beauty. Dear Lord God, to Your sanctity and righteousness in our own. But Lord God, through Jesus, You have given us all things. You have made us rich beyond measure. More than we could ever ask for, Father. Oh Lord God, we praise You tonight. Lord, my soul makes her boast in You, Father. And Lord God, I magnify You, Father God, Lord, for Your wonderful, glorious Gospel. I pray tonight, Father, help us, Father God, to bless the Lord at all times and for Your praise to continually be in our mouth. Lord God, for we know that if we speak these things and we meditate on these things and we dwell upon these things, Lord God, there will be not no any room for the enemy. But dear Lord God, there won't be a chance for him to get a foothold in our home, in our heart, or in our soul. And Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory forevermore, Father. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're here tonight. And you need God's help. You need God's help to be able to testify of His goodness. You need God's help to be able to stand against the walls of the enemy. You need God's help 
You don't want to feel worthless. You don't want to feel ashamed. You don't want to feel like you're disgraced in this world. You know what the Bible says? That we're not to compare ourselves one to another. We're not to compare, brother, if we all look to God's glory. We all realize that we need a Savior. Amen. And brother, when He dwells inside of you, there's no big U's and little knees. There's no big I's and little U's. Amen. He puts and makes us all the children of the kingdom of God. And brother, it's wonderful to rest in that assurance. It's wonderful to rest in that. And brother, to not let the enemy have his way anymore. Don't give him a place. Don't give him a place to take hold. The Bible said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. That they pull down the strongholds. They cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. That's what the devil tried to do was exalt himself above God. It exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And it brings every thought into the obedience of Christ. Every thought. He's able to do that. He's able to to do that. And He will. He will if we believe. If we trust Him. And let Him do it in our hearts. If you're here tonight and you need the Lord's help. And you need God's strength to be manifest in Him. This is a wonderful opportunity. You can come and pray. You can pray right there where you are. As we all stand and we get a song of invitation, a song of praise, and a song of worship, search your heart. Sister Gail. Can we sing amazing grace once again? Yes, amen. Oh. Uh -huh. 